Welcome to the TIFF press conference for Like Crazy. I'm Maria Rally, your press conference manager. Just a couple of quick housekeeping notes. Um, we're going to have the cast come out and stand on the podium for about 60 seconds of flash photography, and then photographers, please move back. Um, and just keep the center aisles cleared for us. And members of the media, please stand and identify yourself in the name of your media outlet before you ask a question. Everybody make sure your cell phones are off. And just so you know, the press conference is being streamed live at www.tiff.net slash festival. And now it's my pleasure to welcome the director, writer, cast of Like Crazy, as well as our moderator, Johanna Schnell Schneller. Excuse me. Hey, good morning. Thanks for coming to the press conference for Like Crazy, the film that won the um, Grand Jury Prize at Sundance, and we're happy to have it here in Toronto. Um, not a huge crowd this morning, but I'm counting on all of you to raise your hands constantly and ask questions. Maybe the only way we should talk about love is at 9 o'clock in the morning, is if we've been up all night the night before. So let's maybe pretend that we've done that. <laughs> yeah, I was sleeping. <laughs> I honestly was asleep. We were up talking. Yeah. yeah, and you've just blown in, right? Like yeah, we just wrapped the movie yesterday at 4 p.m., so uh, we just got here. We were shooting at JFK, and we had to drive to LaGuardia. <laughs> so that's the kind of shoot we had. <laughs> it was long and fun, but we're excited to be here. All right, great, thank you. Um, now, what I understand about this movie is that a lot of it was genuinely improvised. Is that true? That you? L let's talk about, th I mean, that must be like diving in pretty deep without the shore in sight sometimes. H how did you have faith in your actors and then faith in the process that it would turn into a movie? Well, uh, I mean, a big part of uh, our process is the casting process and trusting the actors and the collaboration. And we work from a 50-page outline that's really specific that has subtext, objectives, story, backstory. And really, it's about the rehearsal process. And we had a really exciting, intense, uh, magical week of rehearsals that sort of brought the characters to life. A week? Yeah. yeah they, they, really like they only <laughs> met five days before we started shooting. But it was like two weeks worth of time. Yeah. Well, because we were week. going for like 13 hours Yeah, a day, yeah. There yeah. were long days. And we would always rehearse really late at night, which I think helped induce the, um, the madness even more. Yeah, yeah the it was a cool vibe. Like at two in the morning, it was just, we were just sitting there <laughs> in this, this like abandoned office finding these characters. And it was a really emotional time. Because everybody gets kind of giddy at that hour. Oh, yeah. You, try you get loopy. Stuff, you, you, you really, the truth comes out is yeah. what happens. Um, w have you guys ever done anything like this before? This much improv in, a f in the course of a film? Felicity, why don't you um, answer first? No, I'd never experienced anything quite like working with Drake and Anton before. Um, <laughs> 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 uh, but that it could was. Be a good or bad thing. It was, yeah. it was quite extraordinary how I think we all were quite nervous at the beginning, but. Once we realized we all wanted to achieve the same thing and, and make something that would mean something to us and then hopefully to other people, um, we, uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a good journey. Anton? Yeah, no, I, I hadn't. I mean, we, uh, like, I, I did an episode of Curb Your Enthusiasm when I was, like, 13, but it was <laughs> not, I mean, that was, like, no, this is, was definitely, I hadn't quite experienced anything like this ever. Uh, and it was, uh, it was very very special, very um, maddening and kind of beautiful, amazing experience just to do that because you completely lose yourself in that world, just completely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you would sort of, you know, everybody talks about whether or not you take it home, but in this case, you'd kind of have to take it home because you're... You don't you even know. leave. Like, yeah. you don't even go. You don't <laughs> yeah. have a home. You lose your home. Mm -hmm. and yeah, there's a... There's a you move into a duplex. Well, yeah, totally. There's very little separation between your work and your life. And I think we all wanted to do that for that period of time. We just wanted to get completely obsessed with this story. 
And how long was that period of time? How immersed, or how long were you immersed in this? We shot for about four weeks. Four weeks, yeah. Um, now, uh, let's just elaborate on this a little bit more. There's a chance that you're sort of in the middle of a scene and nothing comes out, right? Like, or you go off in some direction and suddenly you're going off in completely the wrong direction. That happens. You know, what, how, how did you set the parameters? <laughs> that, that happens. Yeah, yeah that, well, too often. <laughs> the key, I mean, it's, it, 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 that's fine too. I mean, so many great moments that are in the film are silent moments in the film and improv is not just dialogue. Improv is, is moments, silent moments and looks and trusting yourself to let it breathe. She always says, just, just listen. So it's like, I think that's one of the main things is having the courage to say nothing yeah. because we yeah. would always find we'd speak in too first, much yeah. in the first take and then you start to, to find what's true by listening and not saying anything. Especially mm -hmm. when you're making a story about a relationship, the amount of times that there's silence in a relationship, whether it's good silence because you just don't need to be saying anything or it's that kind of bad sort of somber silence somber silence where you uh, you don't know what to say. I, it's much more potent and powerful and honest than, you know, and then there are moments where you need to speak because you, if you stop speaking, you might drop the ball and lose something, you know? But I remember when we first had rehearsals, it was like, we were always talking. Like we were just like <laughs> chatting, chatting, chatting. And then you realize that it's not as, it, it feels, it, it, your first instinct, I think, is to talk, and then you realize it's not as honest as that, mm -hmm. just space. We've all seen that reality <laughs> TV thing where people are sitting at dinner and they're just, she looks off in one direction, yeah. he looks off, you know, like there is a lot of silence yeah. Yeah. in the course of a dinner, but you, you don't normally see that on screen. It takes a little bit of guts. And when you're casting, how do you know that these people are going to be able to do this for you? Like, how do you have that faith? You have to go off your instincts. Um, <laughs> really, at the end of the day, I don't know. Took a chance. You know, Anton and I sat down. And we had a coffee, and uh, I, I mean, it just felt right. Mm -hmm. uh, and with Felicity, I mean, we had you know, I'd seen a bunch of uh, different actresses in a room with Anton, and it just didn't quite work yet. And and I saw her audition tape that she sent from London, and it just felt right. I mean, you just your gut. I mean, really, at the end of the day, it's like you can't. I mean, filmmaking is technical, but it's also instinctual and. Uh, especially through the process of, of improvising, it's very important to just go with your gut. And mm -hmm. If you're wrong, you're wrong, but make, make bold uh, decisions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> if you're wrong, yeah, then you're really... Yeah. Sometimes, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, now, the third sort of person in your triumvirate he isn't here, unfortunately, um, Jennifer Lawrence. How did you meet up with her and land her in this movie? Uh, well, uh, my producer, Jonathan Schwartz, uh, introduced us. They met. We had s I'd seen her movie. Uh, I had a film at Sundance uh, the year that Winner's Bone was there and seen the movie, and um, it was amazing. And Anton and Jen had worked together on uh, a movie and uh, just kind of all knew each other and met and got her on board, which was really, she was great. Yeah. Um, does anybody out there have a question yet? I can keep going. Um, you have a huge improv background don't you, in your family. Um, so c can you, how did that kind of imbue your faith in being able to do this, and what was that like for you growing up? Maybe sure. Tell, people yeah. might not know, so. Yeah, my, my mother was uh, one of the founding members of the Groundlings, which is an uh, improvisational sketch comedy troupe in Los Angeles that spawned a lot of uh, talent on uh, Saturday Night Live and a lot of other places, and um, I sort of grew up in that environment and that world as a child, learning it and studying it and eventually uh, teaching it, and then, uh, when I started to make movies, I was about 17, and uh, I started to do it the normal way, and I went to film school and did it the normal way, and sort of realized that it didn't work for me and wasn't what I needed to be doing, so then the, the, then the two just kind of came together and started experimenting on some smaller movies, and then this is kind of the first movie where I feel like it uh, really kind of came to fruition, or the process uh, equaled the, uh, the execution in a way. Hmm. Um, now, you guys as actors, did you feel this experience in a different way than you do in a film that's much more scripted? Do you feel your characters differently? Maybe you could talk about that a little bit. Yeah, very much. It is um, it is really like swimming without armbands. You, um, you have to, especially, you have to really trust Drake because we would do very long takes. Sometimes the takes will be 20 minutes, half an hour, and you'll be doing 15 of them. So obviously, um, there's a lot of material for Drake to choose from. So you have to make sure that you feel open enough to, that you'll trust that he'll make good decisions about your character in some ways. Um, 
but it is, but it's very addictive, I found, having worked with Drake once again. Um, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's, I think a lot of actors, um, we, we like to play with dialogue and we like to have the freedom and it's wonderful to have someone who's prepared to trust their actors in that way. You also have to have, uh, and you always have to have this complete sort of total understanding of your character, but when there's dialogue written for you, that's kind of your first little bit of homework is figuring out why that's being said. And the situation's flipped with this where everything you say has to be that character, you know? And I know there are days where like, you do something and Drake would come over and be like, are you sure that's Jacob and not you, right? And so you step back and go, right, of course, because you, you get to completely understand this person to the point where everything you're saying is them. And it's like, it's that, you know, there's that scene in, in Last Tango where Brando's like talking about cows and shit, and you're like, okay, <laughs> but, but it's so that character, you know? And I don't think that was in the script, but it just becomes like this other thing. It becomes just a human being completely and utterly, you know? Because inevitably when you have lines, there might be one or two, there's always a script supervisor telling you, oh, you know, there's a, there's a period there, there's a comma there, you know, you miss the, you know, and certain ones are less tedious than others, but there is always that person there. And on this, it doesn't matter. As long as it's that human being, you can speak, you cannot speak, and, and, and it just has to be that person aware. And that's why the rehearsals, I think, helped so much, is because we knew what every scene was about and what that person was going through. But the, scene, the scenes will also change. You'll yeah. have an idea yeah, yeah, yeah. at the beginning, and then uh, uh, 20 minutes later, you've completely reversed what you originally thought it was going to be about. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the it's process the of finding what works the best. Yeah. It's like things, things changing. Or, I mean, the first take and the last take are so different. Yeah. I mean, getting to that process is what's exciting. The discovery of the scene and what it needs to be and what it doesn't need to be, more importantly. Yeah, and, and so I wondered if any of the things, like certain scenes that you set out to be one mood ended up being another mood in the film itself. Did anything change radically in the course of it? Like yeah. That? yeah, I mean, scenes would, what they were about would remain the same, but how to get there, mm -hmm. how to organically get there without forcing it. I remember, remember there's a scene where I was supposed to run out of the bathtub and get a wine opener yeah. and stand dripping yeah. wet, and, and we, on yeah. the day, were like, why would we ever do this? Right yeah, now? yeah, yeah. It doesn't make any yeah. sense. And we just, yeah. it became very organic. Remnants of the personal story needs to be got, forgotten. Yeah. And, and it needs to become Anne and Jacob. So, so many things on the page become something else. Yeah. yeah. Did you surprise yourselves in the course of it? Or did stuff come out of you that you didn't know was? Oh, yeah. When you, yeah. When you watch the movie, you think, I didn't say half yeah. of those things. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you can't believe what's coming out of your mouth. Yeah. When she first saw the movie, I think she was in shock. <laughs> because she doesn't remember doing anything that she did, does well, in the movie. Well, because we shoot so much. There's yeah. about five movies, and that was, yeah. that was one of them. And actually, yeah, they're <laughs> all coming out, too. The all five are coming out at yeah. some point. So. <laughs> Look out to <laughs> yeah, to see, the, wait for that DVD. Talk about your ex. <laughs> yeah. um, so, anybody out there with a question? Yeah? Hi there. Uh, Martin Palmer from the Radio Times in um, England. Felicity, um, was she all on the page? She's very convincingly English, and Drake has written this character. Was she all there, or did you add quite a lot to her as well? Um, well, there was... When I initially read it, it would, there was a very, um, it was very accurate, her Englishness. And I think Drake's obviously been hanging out with a lot of English women. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> uh, and then obviously we, we talked a lot about her and, and he wanted me to, to bring as much as possible of, of myself to it. And I think, yeah, I think it was between the two of us really. I mean, what did you find particularly English yeah, about her. Oh, that's great. Good, good. That's great. Great. There can be caricatures sometimes of all nationalities, but sometimes with English, I think when we watch char English characters, you sometimes think that's just not right in American films. Um, and she did. Oh, so I mean it as a compliment to, to Drake. And I was going to ask where the story came from. 
because your right is it your writing partner Ben who appears to be a, a rather regular collaborator with you? Yes, so yes. So where did it come from in the first place? Um, well, it uh, you know uh, I've been in a long distance relationship and uh, been through an experience very sort of similar and in, in a way I had these feelings and emotions that I wanted to sort of express and this was really a, a journey through getting kind of getting over somebody in a way. Um, Felicity actually wrote a lot of the stuff that she does in the, the poem that she does in the film which is now the trailer of this incredible poem that she wrote. So she had a lot of homework to do actually. So th the character really came from a lot of sort of research and homework and same thing with with Jacob and his chair design and I mean they just basically learned everything they could so that we could see 360 degrees around their souls essentially. Wow, that's fucking good. That is good. You should write that down. <laughs> see what comes out when you're talking yeah, spontaneously. It's the, it's the coffee. Yeah. <laughs> um, it is true that, you know, it's hard to do romances in this day and age. You know, a lot of the great romances, if you look at like a Casablanca or, you know, the way we were, they're sort of set against a lot of social upheaval and it is the problems of two little people in this crazy world. And, and y you know, in a world today, you <coughs> think, well, there's almost no obstacles <coughs> to people. You can, there's, you know, very few places in North America anyway, does religion keep you apart or the old things that used to keep you apart don't. But now, being able to connect with each other all around the world, just playing time and distance keeps you apart. So talk a little bit ab about that. Like it feels true and kind of modern and fresh to have that be the, do you know? Do you guys know people in this situation? It feels. I've uh, well, since doing this film and being at Sundance, especially the reaction at Sundance, I've met. I feel like every person has had a long distance relationship. I mean, yeah. and 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 it's it's heartbreaking <coughs> because that's such a because we live in a global world, so that interaction is global and and understanding one another is global and and people move. It, it, I guess it's way more common than I understood. Yeah, we were all surprised about yeah. it, how mm -hmm. common it is, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's a very contemporary love story in that sense that, especially with technology, we, we were saying in the film, that, that fact that you can be texting someone else while in the room with another person. So the way that people have affairs now is very different, and it seems like like crazy captures what it would be like to have an affair now, in a mm -hmm. sense. And, and weirdly enough, the, the texting thing, like th that surrogate interaction, because it's your only way of actually getting together, is so kind of shallow compared, because y you think by texting, I think the movie touches on this, and that, that you think by texting somebody or trying to call them, you connect with them, but you're as long as you're not physically with that person, there's still that hole, mm -hmm. you know? And, and that is a very modern thing that is completely of our culture because we can, vi I mean, video chat is the biggest tease. It's like, you see the person, you hear the person, but they're just not there, mm -hmm. you know? And, and uh, the worst feeling is, is like turning the video chat off because you're like, well, I guess I hung out with them, I, I don't know. It's a very unsatisfying yeah, yeah. experience. It is true, we think we're connected all the time. You think right. with Skype and all of that that you're making a connection, but it, it do, did it make you guys redefine the concept of connection uh, for yourselves? Or yeah, no yeah. more long distance relationships. <laughs> <laughs> no, no more of that. <laughs> Done with that. Anybody have a question out there? No? Okay, I'll ask you, I'll ask you more. How about um, we ask you guys questions? <laughs> <You're d> <laughs> Um, I saw Lynn Shelton's movie, um, Your Sister's Sister, which also was improv, and I'm going to make you jealous now because they did it for eight months of talking on the well phone and working fair. back and forth <laughs> before they actually sat down to film it. But there is a kind of, uh, I know authenticity is a big buzzword, but there is a kind of, you know, immediacy or something to uh, something that you're I improving that you're making up on the spot. Do you? Is that part of the reason you were interested in exploring? Yeah, I mean, improvisation is so funny. I mean, it, 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 in real life, human beings don't wait for other people to finish a line to speak. So in a, in a film context, it's very strange to me when people aren't overlapping uh, dialogue, essentially. Mm -hmm. and, and that's sort of at the heart of what we're doing, is trying to find a real conversation and a real connection. And uh, hitting marks and waiting for lines and having cues 
uh, doesn't cultivate that sort of organic moment where two people are having a conversation. Mm -hmm. So that's sort of where it stems from. Is mm -hmm. and my editor will kill me for saying this, but we try to constantly overlap always when we're when we're doing dialogue mm -hmm. scenes. <laughs> they love that. Editors love that. This really <laughs> feels authentic. And you 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 speak differently. You're different when you have to speak up over somebody. It's just every. It just looks. It's it's real. There's a there's a there's a energy to it. Mm -hmm. And don't you guys feel like people are looking for authenticity in their movies? Like I feel like we've seen. <laughs> no. <laughs> Not at all. No. I mean, the, like there's the school <laughs> of movie where it's all just like cut, 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 and superhero and stuff sure, like yeah. that. And then you need, right? Are you drawn to this kind of alternative as actors? Yeah, I think um, human beings always like watching other human beings, and um, and I guess with something like like crazy, it's a it's quite a voyeuristic experience because you get to be very close to the people in in the film. And um, yeah, I would say there is a there is a need for that intimacy, mm -hmm. definitely. Well, it's like I think like when you watch like an Altman movie and everyone's talking all over each other, and there's that energy that you can't help but feel drawn to, which I mean, in Altman movies, sometimes you, do, you lose yourself in how many people are talking over one another, but it feels so real, and you're so... You have to pay attention, really. You really, you do, really which I don't, so it's really hard <laughs> for me to watch. That's true. I'm just looking at the images, and I, and, you know, I don't get it. Um, but yeah, yeah, you really do. You do have to pay attention. To it. Yeah. yeah. Did you guys feel. have any parameters? Was there anything that you drew the line at in terms of... Showing, Absolutely saying. not. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Really? That was one That's of the That's one of the biggest keys is to completely yeah. not have, I mean, if you have one, where does it start and where does it end? There has to be no parameters. There has to be, it, uh, you know, any, anything could and will happen at any time if you, if you trust the moment. Weirdly enough, the parameters come from the characters themselves. Mm -hmm. Like, they're just, there are certain things that these people would not do that we, or they, they would need very specific stimuli to do them, you know? So... And, and that's, I think, true for people, is there's just certain things that a, a person will not do unless a given situation, a very specific situation comes along. So sometimes there are those situations where they step out of themselves and kind of become different, and then there are those situations where you just always, because I felt there, I was free to be whoever and do whatever I wanted to do as long as it was Jacob, mm -hmm. you know? Because if it wasn't, then it became a kind of free-for-all, kind of messy thing, you know? Watching these two lose themselves into the characters and into the fabric of the film over the course of the six weeks that we worked together was one of the most magical ex things I've ever seen. I mean, it was just incredible how they became these characters and how they fell in love. I mean, mm -hmm. it was incredible. Yeah, watching you guys pose for some stills backstage, it, you really do look like a couple. Like, you have that energy of, you look like you could be. We're like a divorced couple. Yeah. <laughs> 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 a long distance couple. Exactly. Um, you shot it in a pretty unusual way too. Like you didn't use. Yeah, we shot it on an iPhone. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. talk about that. Um, yeah, we shot it on the uh, Canon uh, uh, 7D, which is a consumer camera, still camera that shoots uh, video, and uh, put some film lenses on it, and it was very uh, sort of nimble, which was great for us because we were sort of. You know, uh, in tight, small corners and closets, and sort of running around London, and uh, you know, finding the movie. So it was uh, it was perfect for what we were doing. But it was uh, sort of a highly unusual uh, way to make a film. Yeah. It was. How was that different for you guys? Like, is there's no marks. There's no. Oh, oh absolutely. It's truly liberating. Yeah. You. Um. I mean, our poor uh, DP John. <laughs> it's quite tough for him because he he'll usually you'll. Well, the actors will move and then we'll end up in some corner and poor old John will be yeah, here. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and he's like 6'4 <laughs> and like, yeah. Trying to capture the actors. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's just truly about um, letting your instinct come forward. Hmm. Are you saying what the budget is? Is it just to inspire the budget of the film? It's like $20. Yeah, or yeah. So anybody, all you know, of you. It's a, uh, you know, a, a low budget uh, film. Yeah. Very low budget. So, yeah. you know, we... Uh, uh, really had to rely on each other to get through it. Mm -hmm. How did you know, because the tone is such an interesting, you know, you get them together, you take them apart, but it's it's not, dr it's a never melodramatic, it's always very, how did you trust that your tone would be enough? Do you know what I mean? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, w just sort of um, watching the dailies every day and and in weeding out the things that aren't working specifically, mm -hmm. the mechanics, mm -hmm. the strings, <laughs> seeing those things and sort of eliminating them over the course of the fi film shoot. So by the end, 
they're not there anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, just making constant adjustments. It, it, you know, doing a film like this, you're just always making adjustments, always watching the dailies, always trying to make it better, trying to figure out how we can do it better. Mm -hmm. Did these characters stay with you guys? Do you feel you still know them? I. It's funny, like it. Jacob killed is, Jacob. <laughs> I destroyed. You him. killed him. About I, first, I I tortured him. <laughs> yeah, you did. Uh, and yeah, you then did. I uh, yeah, I don't. It's weird. I had to go to a different movie literally a week later, which was a fucking mind trip, because suddenly there were marks and suddenly there was dialogue and suddenly there were a hundred people versus our ten people and, but I feel like. Uh, the experience does not leave you. Like it's such a magical, surreal time that we spent making this. Cause you just disappear. You forget you have another life. It'll stay with us forever. Yeah. It was the most incredible month of my life. It was unreal. It was unreal. Still magical. In ten years, we'll do the sequel like crazier. <laughs> yeah. Like, like yeah. crazier. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> they just keep going in circles. Yeah. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows what happens Are they to together? Jacob? Of course, yeah. they're always together. They're in, soulmates. In their souls. Yeah. Unlike and they and they may end up together too. You never know. In the movie, who Question. knows what happens in the end of the film? I <laughs> don't. <laughs> okay, I'll ask one. We don't seem to have any questions, so I'll ask you one last question. Um, the parents in the film, I think, are really interesting because a lot of times in romantic movies, the parents are the foil, but in this case, the parents are you know pretty cool. Do you think? This generation has a different relationship with their parents. It's you know it's certainly not the graduate anymore. Yeah, yeah, ab <laughs> absolutely. I think um, I think the film really captures that closeness that our generation has with our parents, and 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 the, and especially for for Anna, sh her parents give her so much confidence uh, to go into the world, and I think that's why she's so open at the beginning because she has such security from, from these two people. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and, and they're friends. They're friends as, as well as being parental. They're drinking buddies. They're drinking buddies. Mm -hmm. All love whiskey. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Congratulations thank you. on the film. Thank you all for coming. Thank you guys thank so you. much thank for coming. Much. Thank you. <laughs>